y'all doing? Nobody's feeling good, great, and all that shit. I hope you had a fantastic weekend and all that. So you don't know that bitch, uh-uh. Who been the places I've been? Fuck like four or five best friend, bitch. You don't know man, bitch. Uh-uh. Anyway, y'all know how I do it. I just jump right into it. Um, listen, like you really have to pay attention to the size when you meet somebody. Like, and I know everybody wants to be uh experience something new or be in a relationship, you know, because don't nobody want to be alone or whatnot. Um, but you really have to pay attention to the signs when you, um, meet some motherfucking body. Um, <clears throat> like if you know that you can tell like, nah, the same, if, if this person isn't giving you, uh, the things that you think they should be given in, a um, a man and woman courtship, then it makes no sense for you to continue on. Case in point, I just recently met somebody, right? And I was just like, my, I don't, didn't remember what he looked like. I just remember he had a gut. Like, we had, like, a couple of laughs on the phone or whatnot. But I still didn't know what he looked like. But as an adult, I know not to base people on, like, just my total attraction to a person, right? Because it's so much more than that. Now, when I see the person, I was not, like, physically attracted to the person. Um, but... Um, we were on and um uh, I just noticed that it seems to me that he definitely had like uh communication issues and it also felt like he he gave me the energy that he gets like angry real quick and he like just run off. We was riding our bikes together and it was a certain shit and I was just like, nah, dude, like this will be the last time you see me. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -mm. I know that me and you are not compatible, you know what I'm saying? And then check this shit out. Why this motherfucker said... Now, he said this before on the phone and we laughed it up because I had to check his ass. He was like, yo, think before you speak. Bitch, who the fuck you think you talking to? Like, I'm not your motherfucking child. Like, what the fuck, is, the fuck you mean? You know what I'm saying? And then he also said we was in the car. Yo, hold on. Yo, nah, I don't like the way you talking to me. Like, nah, that's not... Mm -mm. For me, like, that. that's, that's something that bothered me. I, I definitely didn't like that. But yeah, and then he also was the person that was inconsistent, meaning like he was he would say certain shit and then he wouldn't do on the thing that he said he was gonna do, and I was just like, mm, okay, I see that about you. You know, you gotta pay attention to shit like that. And then like some some people would just be like, you know, see some things that they don't like about someone. Now you're not gonna like a hundred percent or maybe ninety percent like of a person and some shit that you can't let slide, but it's all totally up to your discretion. But for me, I was just like, no, mm -mm, mm, no, I, I don't like, I don't like your, your communication skills. I don't like your inconsistency. And, and I definitely, I'm at this point where, you know, I, I definitely like a man who's consistent. Like you say, you say what the fuck you you say what you going to do when you do that shit. And I understand when, when you can't do it, you know, you let that shit be known too. You understand what I'm saying? That's what grow, that's what I would think somebody would do. You know what I'm saying? I know everybody ain't me and all that old shit, but I can't, I'm not here to teach you. Like, I can't, like, no, it's something that you should know. But then again, that's probably not who you are as a person or whatever. You look at it differently or whatever the case. But, uh, so the point is, is like, you, you pay attention to the side when you go out on a date with somebody and, and, uh, you figure out, like, if, if this person weighs in on, uh, your ideas of what a mate is and are you too compatible? And the first thing is, I would think, well, for me, is communication. If that can't happen, and then, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah. And then another thing, too, like, he a fat, not like he was fat, fat, but I can tell, like, he liked to eat. Mm -mm, I can't, I don't need. And then, you know, like, a bitch like me, I really ain't got no self-control a little bit. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I need somebody who's not so, you know, has a, who like to eat, eat. Like, I like a foodie, but, like, but I also like a person who like work out. But anyway, so anyway, just the point is, just pay attention to the signs when you date somebody. And it can also stop you from getting involved with somebody and, and wasting your time. Like, and that's the thing you don't want to waste your time. So moving right along. Oh, my God, I just saw this story. I think this story is old. 
But y'all, that's why all this fake shit that be going on this motherfucking uh, so-called reality shit, and that shit be fake as hell on this Instagram, all these social media shit. It was some dude who was flossing. He was living such a luxe life and all this sort of shit. Some girl that slid into his motherfucking DM and why this motherfucker, they done hooked up and now he did. He was flexing that he had two Rolex. He was in the beat, in the pool. I come to find out this motherfucker got six motherfucking children. I don't know if he was married or not. But they did say he had six children. Met up with the girl, the girl, and him, the girl that slid into his DM. They want. Uh, holler at them. They holler at them. They come to fuck. They, she bring another girl. They guess they get two or three. So they wind up drugging the dude. I don't know if they actually had sex or not, but they drug the dude. Uh, then had some other two dudes come in, rob him. The one dude stabbed him for no reason when they already done drugged him. Killed the, the guy. Now all four of the motherfuckers is doing prison because they invited two other dudes to come. Man, listen. That DM shit, like, what? and then also, like, God, like, if you, well, I don't know if they, ex if she explained that they, she, he was, she was bringing in another girl, like, you know, I guess for, for a guy, it's probably like, woo, woo, more pussy and shit, but you should be like, uh-uh, bitch. If, if that wasn't agreed in the initial conversation, like, nah, bitch, you get, you get the, bitch, get the fuck out. And then come to find out the shit that he was flossing was all motherfucking fake. I be saying that shit a lot. I know y'all see that shit a lot too on Instagram and all the social media shit. Like people who be saying like they flossing all this. Bitch, you live in the projects. If you don't stop, if you don't stop. But that's why the point is don't believe everything you motherfucking see on this shit. Another motherfucking story I want to talk about is that uh, Zalia Banks and uh, DC Young Five, Fly, DC Young Fly, man, y'all know made her cry because he called her ugly. Now, and now, let me explain something to you as a black woman. Like, you know, our beauty isn't celebrated. We aren't considered um, by the media. When I say media and TV and shit like that, it, black women's beauty isn't really celebrated. If it is celebrated, it has the aesthetic of a white woman. Like, she's slim. You know what I'm saying? She got the wig on or the weave or her hair is straight. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that type of shit. You ain't really seeing no no chick that look like me. Until, like, you know what I'm saying? Until, like, like, for real. Till Trina came. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, for me, for me to see somebody who was reflective and, and that she was in the hip-hop uh, game so she wasn't all over the media media like she is now and that was Trina you know what I'm saying so I was grateful to to see her to see somebody in the media who looked like who had the body resemblance of me um but yet she still you know they still came to that and all that old shit so um but so because of that you don't really see that and then like you know especially the dark skinned girls you know like man it's 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 a, they they do a doozy. You know what I'm saying? They have done a doozy ever since we came in contact with the motherfucking Caucasians. You know what I'm saying? They consider you as ugly, but yet they motherfucking rape your motherfucking ancestors and shit like that. And uh and, and just consider you ugly and, and post and post this this white woman beauty shit. You know, not to say that all beauty, all co all cultures do have beauty and whatnot, but black beauty is not really celebrated because it's vast you know what i'm saying and there's a large variety you know what i'm saying and uh, due to the fact there's a large variety our shit is is definitely incomplete when it comes in the media so i can understand why if she feels uh some sort of way and that that made her cry and then so you look at dc young fly dc young fly baby mama girlfriend fiance whatever the fuck she was to him who just recently passed um because of a BBL, and clearly she was insecure about her motherfucking self. Now, you know, what I'm but in her face, like you know, she wore a lot of makeup. I don't know, she looked like with, without the makeup on, but you know, she she was a she was a she was a cute girl or whatnot. And but she also had that that whiteness about her, so she looked like she was probably some sort of mixed breed or some sort of Caucasian like. And also, DC Young Fly also expresses affection for Caucasians because he said when uh, Britney Spears came out with Oopsie Did It Again, like, you know, he was just like, ooh, it made his dick hard, basically. You know what I'm saying? So he definitely liked that. So it's no surprise that he had a girl that looked like that. So <clears throat> with that being said and him calling her dad and then unfortunately, uh, well, you know, we all go past, you know, when the girl died of the complications of the BBL, uh, she went on to say, you know, that it was karma because she she was hurt. So she equated her hurt to his hurt. Like your hurt is no more extreme than hers. 
and I understand that as a as a black woman, like for real, like you know, as uh, and then like she's she, she's a chocolate girl, you know, but our chocolate sisters are definitely aren't really represented. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you look at like all the men that get married, who's who's financially well, who who they marrying? Some Caucasian like bitch. Almost all you motherfuckers, the the so called the the brothers. Y'all so like y'all don't even know that y'all minds are so motherfucking manipulated on that shit. Or that you just want to be a part of the Caucasian culture. Like, it is just disgusting. And self-hatred is real. You don't want to have a black daughter or, or son. You want to be, you want that mixy shit. So his hate is no, or his hurt is no greater than hers. And let's be real, we're all going to pass at some point in, 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 in life. That That's just a part of life. So that's all. And then for some, and how everybody going in on her, like y'all just, y'all not diving deep into that shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Everybody expressed themselves differently. And that's how she fucking felt like expressing her motherfucking self. And that's, you know, and that, and that is what it is. He hurt her. She hurt him. Yes, we know that you go in there to get roasted and all that little shit, but he cut her deep. So he, she cut you deep. I mean, who who's to say one person's hurt is greater than others? It seemed like it was equal to me, but also how people going in on her like this one comedian telling myself that the that the Caucasian dude should have spat in her first face some more. This is a black man saying that about a black woman. <sighs> But anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think. But anyway, y'all know my name is Real. I'm an intimacy coach class seduction with the service called Seductive Art. Um, and on September 25th, in the spirit of Juneteenth, we will, I will be celebrating sexual and feminine freedom with one third of seductive art, which is ESS and erotic, sensual, and seductive dance class. We will do sexy stretches. We're going to work out. We're going to put on our heels. I'm going to teach you how to walk in heels with confidence and technique. And then we're going to dance in heels. Like we're going to, I'm going to teach you how to captivate him or if you are uh, uh, entertain, how to captivate your, your audience. It's all about captivation. It's all about your face. First of all, it's in your face. First, in your, then in your movements. Your movements can be subtle. They don't have to be vigorous and harsh in order for you to be sensual, erotic, and seductive. So I hope y'all come and join me. Go to my website, which is seductive-art.com. It's very uh, trans, black trans woman friendly. So you definitely are welcome. My drag, black trans, black drags come to. Come get this uh, work from this uh, biological woman. And I ain't a diss. I'm just saying. Like, we all learn from each other. What the fuck? Um, and then, uh, y'all know I'm an author. The title of my book is called Quickie and Seven Short Erotic Stories. Be why you fuck, fuck, while you read. I'm also a designer. The name of my brand is Real Nice by Real. Um, I will be having some things coming out real soon. So please be on the lookout for that. And if I resonate with you, you know what to do. Please hit that. Click that. I would appreciate that. Um, and y'all know how we leave this motherfucker. Be gracious, be kind, be generous, be loving, be honest, be focused, be on time, be um, humble, be about your motherfucking money, be voiceless, be opinionated, be great at what you're great at, be normal and there's some fake ass motherfuckers around you and get rid of them immediately, be, be happy, be uh, fit. Mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, emotionally. Uh, be one with God. Uh, be all these things. So we pushing P around here. When I say we pushing P, we pushing positivity. And in the meantime of all of that, you always don't ever turn your back. Don't ever shy away. You always be you because that's what makes you unique. Until we meet again, y'all be safe. Peace.